Today's vlog is going to be on squash, yellow versus green, stacking totes, and Mr. Beast. I get a kick out of him. Why, hello everybody. And this is Robbie from Southern California, and I came out here to sit in the morning before the sun goes over the trees and look at my squash and try to figure out what is going on. That looks really good down there. That's a cocozel. Then you've got this one. Let me see if I can point right there. That is, I believe it's a black beauty. And that one was planted not long ago. Then you've got all those little squash. This is just me analyzing, basically for my notes. In here, same thing, not really growing. This one's taking off pretty good. And shame on me, it's either a cocozel or a black beauty. And then of course we've got this one. So, the front yard, you all know the front yard. I'm gonna get up. These chairs, I don't know who invented these chairs. Everybody loves them, but I sit in them and it's hard to get up sometimes. Um, the front yard, man, that is Gary. Let me, let me respond to him just so I don't get all his little ding-dings in this way that knows it responded. Okay, Good eye on Gary. The front yard doesn't get a lot of sun, obviously. This is what I'm getting here. I've got these big, big, beautiful pine trees that I absolutely adore and would not want to take out. It's amazing to have them. It's more scary to think where they're getting the water from, but we won't get into that. So we don't get early morning sun here. And then of course it gets this afternoon sun. And then late afternoon, not too late, it drops behind the house and then all this gets no sun. Now we are going in the fall, and what I'm trying to analyze, which I already think I know, is there's only two types of squash that I could really grow in the front yard. It's gonna be the Black Beauty, the regular zucchini, and Cocozel. Because the gray squash, yellow squash, they don't do well here, which means maybe they need it warmer. Maybe they need more sun. Because remember, it's zucchini, the regular zucchini, I'm gonna say Black Beauty, that I end up growing in the winter. Once you have a nice established plant, you can take care of it, at least I can here in Southern California, and still get the occasional squash throughout the winter into early spring while I'm getting ready with my next ones. And then, well, then I still have squash all year. So I'm gonna say, without any concrete evidence, ooh, speaking of concrete, without any concrete evidence, that if I want to grow squash in the front yard from now on, I'm going to have to keep it to either Cocozel, which is a really nice squash. It's the striped one and tastes really good. They're both good. You know, I like all the zucchini, even the gray zucchini, but I'm going to have to say that for the front yard, it would be Cocozel or Black Beauty zucchini, just the regular ones. Stay away from the yellow. I don't do well with the yellow here. I think we're not warm enough, my thoughts. There's something being up in the hills that the yellow never are prolific for me. I do grow them, you get a few here and there, but you know, if I'm gonna put the effort out, if I'm gonna put the effort out, stick a plant in the ground, big effort. I wanna be able to know that I'm getting something, you know, really good. And I, I really, I happen to like the Black Beauty Zucchini the best. So I'm gonna stick with that, especially, especially for the front yard. And then the cocoa cell, I really enjoy that. It's such a pretty squash. So that's what I did here now, just kind of looked at it. So we've got these totes here, and you know how I love my totes and I'm really eyeing big time. So we're gonna have to see what I do with these totes. I did not buy them new. I bought them at a thrift store quite a few years ago now. These are stackable, and that's why I'm really eyeing them. So in the winter, if the squash dies back, do I move them? I don't know what I'm gonna do yet. Do I move them somewhere else? Do I keep them here? I can pull them apart and stack them. I'm probably gonna end up doing that. I don't know. I will make hiding places for rabbits. Not that they can't go in between there, but if they're pulled apart and stacked, then the rabbits will even have more hiding space. So I'll have to think about that. But if I stack them, so I'd get an extra one there, I would get one, two, three, and pulling it apart, I don't know if I wanna pull that one or pull it out totally. I don't know. And that's just a big old tote. And it's got sweet potato growing in there. So I'm going to have to think about how I want to do that later. I've got so much. I can't take on any more that I've taken on. Oh my gosh. I don't want to do any more. 
So that's it. So I just thought I'd just kind of say good morning and my analyzing. I can't get up. I can't get up. Oi, ay, 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 ay. Oh no, they're like so, they, they put your behind back there and you're leaned all the way back. Plus I'm on wood chips. So you're really leaned back there and then you have to get up. Oh, I don't know, but they are comfortable. I like a plain old chair. So that's what I'm analyzing here. And I'll see if, see if I pulled them apart, they wouldn't have to be pulled that much. Probably halfway between the totes because you, you balance the, the smaller totes on the top, but it would still be a whole tote, if not more. And that's why I'm wondering how I want to do this. No hurry, this is just thinking about winter. I really like the setup. So you want to have space because with the flower pots here, which worked out really good. I can put the stakes in there and then I put the tool around. That was good by rabbits and squirrels and rats and everything. Nothing's bothered anything. Nothing's been touched. The top is open, so I still will get insects, but that allows the bees to come in and the birds and everybody to take those insects. I've got tomatoes and different brassicas growing in there. There's some dinosaur kale back there. There's a hybrid something colored there. This looks like it's a tree color that kind of went over. So I'm gonna try to analyze, but I really like this. So I kind of opened this up a little bit. Now, why didn't I, let me move my chair. Why didn't I just stick the stakes in? I can't stick them in the ground because this is blacktop. This is literally a parking lot for the front of the house here. And I could stick the stakes in the totes, but then I'm really making this skinny netted, you know, close and then the leaves would be constrained. And I have found a lot of plants don't want to be squished. <laughs> they want to have their freedom to spread their wings. Okay, spread their, their leaves. But the point is by using a nice size container, and you can use five gallon buckets, by the way, and plant something in it. Absolutely, I probably will at some point. I've got a lot of buckets. You can now make this tool cage that I did that cost me probably, wow, a whole $4 in tool and you don't throw the tool away, you keep the tool, you can, you know, spread it as wide as you want. And I could even put it all the way there, but I want to be able to walk back there. And then I can pull this one back too. And then I would have a big, bigger cage, you know, and let the leaves spread. But this is fine. I just kind of opened it up here. See? And now there's plenty of room. And then of course, this is all close pin, so I can just take it down anytime. So I'm really, really happy with this. And that's it. So let's see, food for thought. Let us stay as healthy as we possibly can. Number one, my motto is eat something good. And I'm not gonna tell you that everything has to be homegrown, everything has to be organic, everything has to be this, every, no, no, no. I firmly believe we have to enjoy life. And if there's things you like, you do what you want, you eat what you want. But the thing I do want to try to impress on everybody is eat something good, anything good. It doesn't matter what it is. Grow some parsley, grow some mint, make some mint tea, grow some cucumbers. And well, now it's probably late for cucumbers, but that makes the greatest cucumber drink I make. You can make a green drink so easy and light, you wouldn't even know that you're getting something that's fabulous for your body. I'll have to get that one up. That's the number one. Number two, you want to move. You want to move around a little bit. Doesn't matter what you do. Walk outside, take a walk, but don't sit all the time. Your whole body needs you to move. Your intestines need you to move to make everything work right. You need to move somewhat. Number three, connection. You want to have connection, not just with your garden and your plants, but with people. Now, that means talking on the phone, getting together with some family members and friends. And if you can't do it in person, let me tell you something, Zooming is amazing. I'll show you an example. My mother's and my dad, they both have been basically with the pandemic in the house all the time. They're afraid to go anywhere. They rarely go anywhere out of the house unless they absolutely have to. And when we did that live feed with the hummingbirds for three hours live, she watched on her TV. My brother set up the TV so she can watch. She said it made her feeling, her ma it made her feel amazingly good. She couldn't believe it. That's because it was like zooming. It was you, there was engagement. You want to laugh. You want to be able to express yourself. 
So that's something to think about. You know what makes me laugh sometimes? This is gonna be crazy. You're not even gonna know who I'm talking, Mr. Beast. Mr. Beast makes me laugh. I didn't even know who the guy was two months ago. Isn't that funny? Somebody brought him up to me. You know who Mr. Beast is? No. <laughs> and I watched him and I get a good big laugh out of watching him. I really enjoy watching some of the funny stuff he does. I consider him fun and clean, but amazingly brilliant because he can take 10 minutes of your time and you just walk away laughing at all the people's expressions and the things he does with different people and children and stuff. It's amazing. It's, I should say older kids. He's giving away stuff to high schools and people's tuitions and just all kinds of stuff. I mean, he put people in a circle. It was just so funny. And I've actually gone back to watch him from years ago, how he evolved over the years. It makes me laugh. It makes me feel good. I wonder if Mr. Beast has a garden. Let me put it this way. Mr. Beast, if you don't have a garden, you can get somebody to make you a garden. Eat good because we all need you around. Healthy, thinking and brilliant for a very, very long time. Speaking of that, I think I'm going to go collect some greens and make a green drink today. So with that, have a wonderful, wonderful day. Try to watch something that makes you laugh. And don't forget to eat what you grow. Bye-bye. This is so pretty. This was small just a little bit ago and it's taken off. I finally see female flowers. See, there's, there's a female back there. See a little bulge? I'll show you. See how there's nothing here? It just looks like the stem of the flower. But now you see that? It's thicker. That's a female. That's a female. I had to feed it some compost tea because it doesn't get enough sun. So I have my wonderful <laughs> compost tea here and I got to get my dipper here I made an extra one to put here and that really has helped but not with the yellow squash hmm live and learn I get a kick out of him you would too